Hi students. So for today we will discuss about the principles no, that should guide human organ donation and transplantation. Now for us to understand what organ transplantation is, we have to get a little brief or, or a brief history about this procedure. Now organ trans transplantation was only uh, to treat illness, no? Was accepted as a treatment only during the 19th and 20th century. No? That there are some establishment, no, like the U.S. Navy Tissue Bank in 1949, which has given uh, USA its first bone and tissue processing and storage facility. Now, this facility, yung tinasabi natin U.S. Navy Tissue Bank, is also a facility that gave rise no, to, to eye, no, organs, to blood, sperm banks, and etc., Okay, the concept goes on like that. During the 1950s, no, Dr. Joseph Murray has performed the first successful kidney transplant in Boston, Massachusetts. While in 1967, no, uh, the, the first heart transplant no, was, was done in, uh, in Groot Shure Hospital in Cape Town okay, by Dr. Christian Barnard. While here in the Philippines, no, Dr. Domingo Antonio performed the first successful kidney transplant in the 1960s. Now, organ transplant seems a promising procedure. However, there's, a, there's a one problem that they encounter. No? This is the rejection of the host body. Okay? Because anything that you put inside your body, be it another organ, as long as it is not recognized by your body, your body tends to reject that because of your immune system. Now, to combat this host rejection in 1978, no, cyclosporin was in introduced no, to counteract organ rejection. Now, cyclosporin is not without side effects. So they continuously researched to neutralize the side effects of the drug. Okay? And also, even though the intentions of orga organ transplantation is initially good, the procedure is, however, not without ethical controversies. Now, when we deal with cases of organ transplantation, three major bioethical principles no, have, to be be have to be in our mind and in our hearts no, when we try to examine these cases. First, the principle of human dignity. Second, uh, we have the principle of stewardship and creativity. And third, the principle of totality and integrity. When we say, uh, when we consider the principle of human dignity in organ transplantation, we have to bear in mind that every part of your body no, should be treated as if it is a person. No? It should be treated with respect. Okay? It should be treated not as an economic uh, advantage, no? Ibibenta mo yung kidney mo, ibibenta mo yung ganyan mo, no? Just to uh, just to gain economic gains, no? Just to have economic gains. Your your body parts should be treated not as an economic gain, not as a currency, but as a person, as part of you. Okay? Number 2. Being uh, the principle of stewardship and creativity tells us that we are uh, we are the owners, no? We are not the we are we do not have absolute dominion over these kidneys, these organs. Na kapag gusto nating idonate ng dahil kikita lang tayo, eh pwede na natin gawin, no? We have to understand that uh, that this that these body parts of yours should be taken care of. No? Kung ginagawa natin ng donation out of charity, that's in principle of, uh, that's in conformance with the principle of stewardship. No? Because you take care no, of others, other people's lives. But if you, if you did it in, in case of, uh, in case that you want to gain money out of it, then your ethical morality or your morality may be in question. Third, the principle of uh, 
totality and integrity tells us that we should ensure no the the overall functionality overall well-being of people who are going to donate and who are going to receive an organ okay now there are some principles also no, that tells us how to uh, that underlies no the organ transplantation and donation first no yung organs natin are scarce therefore your candidates who wait for the procedure okay should be selected properly no sa sobrang scarce or sobrang kaunti ng ng mga kidneys ng mga organs no na nagdo-donate hindi lahat nakakakuha this has implication in choosing the person who should be uh, who should be a recipient of that organ. So dapat piliin din ng tama yun. Number two, yung applicable laws no, sa ating bansa at sa iba't ibang lugar are not so clear about the practice of organ transplantation. No? Third, there may be an incidence of trading and trafficking organs that even cross national borders. So those are the issues that underlie organ donation and transplantation. Okay? Sabi ko nga, we must remember that we have an obligation to give reverence that is due to our body because of these principles. Yung kaninang binanggit kong principles, human dignity, stewardship and creativity, and totality and integrity. Okay? Now, if we try to sell no, our body parts systematically no, or in an organized manner, you are actually performing organ trafficking. No? Organ trafficking is detested because it disrespects, no, it disrespects our um, our body parts. No? It disrespects our body parts. Now, human organs should not be treated no, as if they were spare parts because on the first place, pinakinabangan mo yan. No? And on the first place, yan ay parte ng pagkatao mo. And that should be respected. No? That, that due respect should be given to that body part. Now, uh, we are uh, the church teaching, uh, the Catholic Church, would uh, would tell uh, is not is not against no transplantation as pope pius the 12 said you may dispose of your body no to destine it to ends that are useful moral, morally irreproachable and even noble ibig sabihin pwede mong ibigay no ang body part mo as long as your your your, your intentions your motives no are useful morally irreproachable at at uh, at makakatulong sa ibang tao. Okay? Kailangan nga lang dapat your decision no should have still respect on your own body. No? Hindi lang basta dapat out of your own whim, out of other people's pressure and pinag-isipan ng maigi. Okay? This decision, sabi nga ni Pope Pius the 12 should not be condemned but positively justified. Now, here are some ethical guidelines for organ donation and transplantation. When I say guidelines, no, in the in the perspective of bioethics, these are not the set rules, but rather guiding principles that or guiding uh, uh guiding tenets, no, for organ donation and transplantation. Number 1, if you're going to donate something to someone, Make sure that there is a serious need on the part of the recipient that cannot be fulfilled in any other way. Superficial and shallow motives cannot be an overriding reason no, to effect or implement human organ transplantation by a donor to a recipient. Okay? There should be seriousness of condition. Okay? Dapat serioso or critical ang condition. Okay? Or there is a serious need na hindi naman dapat ma, na hindi mapupunan, no? Gaya ng mga dialysis patients. Kasi habang ang ang dialysis patient ay eh, habang buhay na habang buhay na silang um yung uh, dependent, no, sa dialysis machine, 
no, sa procedure, there is a serious need among them. So that's why uh, in this uh, in this regard we must also be sensitive no on the seriousness of organ transplantation kasi there are some people no who are posting in social media no jokes about they donated their kidneys their organs no just to buy uh, the new iPhone the new PS5 no even though they are joking they are they did it in in a tasteless manner. No? Why? Because maraming tao, maraming pasyente ang nangangailangan ng ng uh, ng organs. Maraming pasyente ang nangangailangan. And they are seriously in dire need of that. Then here comes the social media joking about it. So that's an improper way no, to treat your body organs and to treat the seriousness of the condition of your patients, no? of patients needing organ donation. No? So that's not a proper joke no? because of the seriousness of their condition and the seriousness of this issue. Okay? Number two, if, you're, if you have decided na to, do, to donate something, you should also consider... no the functional integrity of that person of the donor because in uh, in donating organs ethically no the functional integrity of the donor should not be affected or should not suffer okay it should remain intact kahit na yung anatomical integrity niya ay magbabago or will change no ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng anatomic anatomical integrity and functional integrity in terms of ethical principles, no? Or in, in, in the perspective of bioethics. When we say anatomic integrity or anatomical integrity, this refers to your quantitative completeness, no? Kompleto yung bilang ng katawan mo. Dalawang kidney, isang, lib, isang buong liver, isang stomach, dalawang mata, dalawang tenga, no? The anatomic integrity is complete, no? Kung kompleto ka, no? to begin with, bago ka mag-donate. Now, functional integrity refers to your systematic efficiency of your body. No? Kung hindi nagbago yung, yung kidney function mo or yung, ano, yung kidney function mo as is, etc. No? Kung yung pag-function mo bilang tao, uh, physiologic function mo ay tama or psychologic function mo ay tama, that refers your, to your functional integrity. Now, if you donate something, kahit na magbago yung anatomic integrity mo, as long as your functional integrity is is efficient, is tama, is walang nagbago, okay lang mag-donate. But if your if your functional integrity will be uh, affected, no? Then you are not uh, you, you cannot donate your body part, no? For example, those who are diabetic, no? Diabetic patients cannot donate because a body part lalo na for example yung kidney nila because if you remove one part of their kidney, no another uh, only one kidney will suffer no on the effects of the of their disease no so mawawala mababinawasan mo yung chance niya na maka-survive sa kidney failure no because tinanggal mo yung organ para i-donate no that may sound dakila but it's not no it's not proper okay so yun yung yun yung isa pang primary consideration yung functional integrity ninyo kapag ikaw ay nagdo-donate. Number three, the risk taken by the donor as an act of charity should be proportionate to the good effect in favor of the recipient. This only says that when we donate, when a donor donates something to a patient, it should be proportionate to the, the good effect on the recipient should be proportionate no? doon sa act of charity na ginawa niya. Okay? Ibig sabihin, dapat makinabang yung pasyente or yung recipient sa binigay na organ sa kanya. If for example, no, for example, you gave one, you gave one of your kidneys to a patient, no? This this tenant is satisfied when that patient, yung recipient, eh nag-improve yung quality of life after the donation. Okay? Malalaman naman 'yon by proper assessment, no? By proper assessment. Okay? So before you can uh, substantial uh, basta mag basta dapat 
when a donation or an act, an act of donation is done, it should uh, the good effect, no? Should be foreseen as to be good, no? Dapat may mabuting magagawa doon sa recipient. No? Because it's a total waste of resource, it's a total waste of effort on the part of receipt of the donor if magdo-donate siya ng kanyang body part to a dying patient no or a terminal case kumbaga no so sayang lang sa effort ng part sa effort sa part ng receipt ng do, ng donor no next the next guideline should be that the donor's consent is free and informed no Remember that organ donation is never an obligation. No, hindi yan obligation, but rather an act of charity. No? Donate nga eh. Pag sinabing donate, you give. No? No, but you do not donate because you expect something back. Okay? So for the donor to act freely, dapat that person should have free and informed consent. No, Dapat all information no mapa medical at ethical aspect dapat alam ng pasyente there should be no pressure on him or her no kasi uh, let's say let's let's face it in our society lalo na sa Pilipinos no mabig, uh, mabigat no ang familial ties no ini-emphasize ang familial ties okay syempre Kung ang kapamilya mo ay mayroong uh, nangangailangan ng kidney, you may feel that you are obligated no, to help that person. Again, I, I tell you, organ donation is never an obligation. Okay? If you want to give, give. Kung ayaw, hindi. Okay? Always, uh, uh, ang... Ang ating society minsan kapag tumanggi ka sa kamag-anak, no? Mayroong at mayroong masasabi. But they have to understand, no? That this is a uh, this is a life-changing decision and that all other all other um, all other influences to your decision should be disregarded rather than your own voluntary decision. Yun lang ang nagba-matter. No? Okay? You showed uh, in organ donation also and organ receiving uh, receiving an organ, there are there's a big, no, financial implication on the surgery. So that you must be clearly uh, it must be clearly specified in detail to avoid legal and even ethical repercussions. Number uh, the, the next guideline or the next tenet that we should uh, take into consideration is the is that the recipients for the scarce organ should be selected justly. Okay? Dapat piliin no kung uh, kung sino no kung sino dapat ang maka no ng organ na ito. First na dapat diyan yung nasa life and death situation. Kung may chance ang mabuhay sa organ donation, no, we must prioritize these patients. Kung magi improve ang quality of life ng pasyente, no, dapat bigyan siya ng uh, bigyan siya ng or i, i paunahin na siya, no, sa list ng transplants ng ng transplant recipient or organ recipient. Kung ang pasyente ay uh, merong uh, debilitating disease no which can be improved by organ donation pwede rin siyang unahin no but never the social class no or the never the social status because lahat tayo pantay-pantay kapag tayo ay nagkasakit na okay ideally ganoon but in some cases or in reality nauuna pa rin ang social status no kasi syempre sila yung may kakayahang magbayad sila yung kakayahang may kakayahang uh, makakuha or maka-influensya ng ibang tao para mag-donate para sa kanila. Well, that's not ethically possible, uh, plausible, hindi siya katanggap-tanggap. But reality, it happens. No? But what I'm telling you is that we must follow the ideal. No? We must follow or we must observe the principle of justice. May hustisya. Dapat ma- maibigay sa atin kung ano ang dapat sa atin. At kung kailangan talaga natin ng organ, donation, dapat mabigyan tayo. 
So I'm I'm discussing the idea no? compared to what is really happening. Tatandaan, ang next guideline natin, ang dapat nyo tandaan, that donation is by nature an act of charity. Both by the donor, hindi lang ng donor, kundi pati na rin ng recipient. No? Well, understandable naman sa donor na nagbigay siya, that's an act of charity. But in terms of uh, the recipient, what is the act of charity on the part of the recipient? No? On the part of the recipient, the act of charity is by shouldering the expenses, no? of the receipt of the donor no in terms of dapat yung pagpapatest no dapat gastos ng recipient yon sa pag sa bayad sa operasyon no dapat wala nang iisipin yung donor kasi mag malaking bagay na sa kanya ang mawalan ng organ no dapat ang recipient siya na yung mag uh, mag, mag mag shoulder no nung nung expenses no pre-op bago maoperahan and post-op or if they develop any complications kasi nga kinunan na nagbigay siya ng kidney sa iyo or ng organ sa iyo okay now another act of charity on the part of the recipient is by taking care of the organ being given to you no? hindi ibig sabihin na kapag binigyan ka ng organ ng isa ng ibang tao hindi mo ito pangangalagaan. Babalik ka sa dati na that brought you to your present condition. No? Kung binigyan ka niya ng bagong liver, no? hindi ibig sabihin nun, pwede ka na magwalwal ulit sa alak. No? You have to take care of that organ. No? You have to take care of that uh, part given to you. You have to treat it with respect. No? In respect no? to the virtuous act of the person who gave it to you. Okay? So here in the Philippines, organ donation uh, was is guided no by the Republic Act of 7170 or the Organization Organ Donation Act of 1991. Okay? Uh, the main gist of this law is that it encourages the donor to donate their kidneys or liver or any other human organs when opportunity opens up for them. Okay? Tandaan, this is still anchored no doon sa uh da, doon sa 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 concept that donation is a voluntary action. Okay? Now, when the patient, in this law, it specifies also that when the patient is uh, irreversibly brain dead or clinically dead, uh, they can also, their organs can be harvested upon, uh, upon the consent or pagpayag ng kanilang mga uh, relatives or, or kung sino man ang may karapatang magbigay ng consent, no? Now, if the body or if sinabi rin dito sa law na to, if the body or or a cadaver has no claimant, walang relative, no? Sa isang kunyari may may isang uh, pasyente or may isang na aksidente na sinugod sa ospital tapos namatay sa ospital, no? It says that in this law the hospital can harvest the for transplantation no doon sa cadaver na iyon no, without formal and free informed consent provided that no yung yung family nung nung katawan or yung bangkay ay hindi makita within 48 hours no by means of public uh, public announcement no radio tv newspaper or even social media okay Kung wala, no? Kung wala ang ang walang claimant yung bangkay, the hospital can harvest, no? That body part, no? If needed. Okay? If needed. As long as binigay ko na yung condition kanina. Now, tatandaan lang po na hindi pagmamay-ari ng ospital yung organ organs na iyon. Okay? That's not their property. Kasi pag sinabi mong property nila yon, they can put it up for sale. Well, donation does not go that way. no? So the hospital can harvest the organ, but it's not their property. no? It's not their property. So here are some church teachings on organ donation. You may want to look into it because it's uh, it specifies. no? It specifies uh, 
one way or another, no, ng mga pinag-usapan or diniskas natin kanina, no? Like for the for, like for example, Evangelium Vitae, no, which was published in 1995. Now, ang sabi dito, one way of nurturing a genuine culture of life is the donation of organs. So, ibig sabihin, okay lang naman mag-donate as long as you uh, perform it in ethically and acceptable manner in a view to offering a chance of health and even of life to the sick. Okay? Next, in a, in, a, in a document published in 1987, the Donum Vitae, which says that any procedure which tends to commercialize human organs or to consider them as an item of exchange or trade must be considered immoral. Ito rin yung sinabi natin kanina, that it should not be part no, or should not be considered as something of economic value. Another type or another uh, another document no which says that in uh, in which was published in 2005 the Deus Caritas Est it says that we are dealing with human beings and human beings always need something more than technically proper care they need humanity it espouses no the humanity of every part of your body so and while the CBCP our local church uh, bishop conference no in 2008, issued a statement say, stating that a just allocation of the scarce resource should be safeguarded. Scarce organs, organ donors, should be made available first to local recipient. Okay? To local recipient muna. Now, on xenotransplantation, um, we all, we are, uh, nabanggit, di ko pala nabanggit kanina, that there are several types, no? of uh, transplantation. It can be an autotransplant, meaning one part of your body to another part of your body, while allotransplant is getting a, a transplant from from another person or the, of, of the same species, no? a transplant from one of, a transplant within the same species. So from, from humans to humans, that's an allotransplant. But if you transplant, no, animal organs no, to human, you call that a xenotransplant. Okay? It is, is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Because in the Philippines, no, one doctor, Dr. Avenilo Aventura, performed several xenotransplantation of pig valves to humans. Now, if you try to examine this, this is actually ethically indifferent. Hindi masama, hindi mabuti. Okay, Yun nga lang, if it impairs the integrity of psychological or the genetic identity of the person receiving it, dapat itigil. Okay? Or wag gawin. Kung ito ay makasasama sa pasyente, if it will bring more harm, then you should not do a xenotransplant. That's the end of my lecture for, uh, for this week. I hope you learned something from me. If you have any questions, you may send me a direct message through my Facebook Messenger. Have a nice week.